Remember when Al Gore was into truth, wanted to foist it on us, no matter how inconvenient it was? We heard a lot about that film. I just typed its title into the ABC search engine and got a couple of pages of results. Let me tell you about another film, Planet of the Humans. I typed that into the ABC search engine and came up blank. This is a documentary that absolutely skewers the renewable energy industry, which is kind of strange because this is a film of the far green left. Directed by Jeff Gibbs, its executive producer is Michael Moore, the millionaire leftist Academy Award winning director of Bowling for Columbine, Fahrenheit 9-11 and Trumpland. However, in this film, the argument is that renewable energy is not clean, not green and not practical. Have a look at this segment exposing a General Motors promotion of electric cars. Because everybody thought we killed the electric vehicle. No, we didn't. It's alive and well. So what's charging the, the batteries right now? What, where, where, what's the source of a? Well, electricity? here. It's, it's coming from the building. I mean, are, is it... Um, what's our mix of power? Oh, actually, Lansing feeds the building. What's that? Lansing feeds power to the building. So I don't, I don't know. They're. Uh... I bet you they're a bit of coal. Oh, they're heavy on natural gas, aren't they? Yeah, right now, the car is charging off of your grid. Right. Well, it would be charging off uh, our grid, which is ninety, about ninety-five percent coal. How long do you think it will be before there's a solar and wind uh, powered grid? Oh golly. To suggest that all of the power used for these cars will be generated from wind and solar um, in the very near future would not be correct. In fact, these we're talking about charging these up at night, so there won't be any solar at that time. So we're down to wind, and very often at night the wind does fall off. That uh, reminds me of last year's federal election campaign. The film goes on to attack major corporations for their pretense, their virtue signalling on renewable energy claims to be 100% renewable. We never stop thinking about what's best for the planet. We now run Apple on 100% renewable energy. All of our facilities worldwide. And they did chop down a forest to put up solar panels near their North Carolina plant. But they didn't disconnect from the grid, and they can't. Duke says energy-hungry companies like Apple can never go entirely off the grid. They're still hooked up to our grid. Despite all of the claims, I haven't found a single entity anywhere in the world that's running on 100% solar and wind alone. Wow, this is the sort of hypocrisy and reality that we on the centre-right usually point out. And it's coming from the hard left. The film even argues that the mining of rare metals, intensive energy use to make steel, wind turbines, land clearing for solar farms and the need to dispose of them and replace this infrastructure within a decade or two is not, well, it's not environmentally friendly. So after all the mining, the fossil fuels, the toxins, the environmental destruction, here's what happens next. Only a few years after it was built, things at Ivanpah began to fall apart. Broken mirrors littered the desert. Yes, these giant solar and wind technology installations may last only a few decades. Then tear it down and start all over again. If there's enough planet left. If there's enough planet left. Yep, it is catastrophist. This is full-on climate alarmism. That's the part the green left media will love. The Guardian, the nine newspapers and the ABC will nod their heads at this stuff. It's what they've been saying for years. But this film exposes their incurious backing for renewable energy. On the centre-right, we've always said that renewables are nice, if they work, but they're expensive, unreliable, impractical and, frankly, a bit of a con. Now the left are onto this. For instance, exposing the absolute nonsense of so-called biomass green energy essentially just burning trees. You got everything here. So you have the number one polluter in the state that people think emits magical fairy dust from the smokestack. 
The reality is what you have is a facility that burns 400,000 green tons a year of trees. No. This facility burns 30 cords of wood per hour. That's a hell of a lot of wood. And on top of that, it actually burns natural gas as well. And to think you would have to have 10 of these to replace one average coal-fired power plant. <laughs> you know, it's just not going to work. It's just nuts. It takes a great deal of fossil fuels to cut down all of these trees, to truck yeah. them in, to use the big machinery to dump the wood chips everywhere. So the idea that somehow this is not anything to do with fossil fuels just doesn't even make any sense. It's, it couldn't happen without fossil fuels, in fact. Renewable energy, because you can grow more trees. Apart from all this, Planet of the Humans exposes how big money, major corporations and wealthy investors profit from all of this, soaking up government subsidies and profiting from green posturing. Bloomberg sponsored a UN climate session to discuss wrapping up biomass and biofuels around the world. Billionaires were in love with the idea of turning what was left of nature into green profits. Remember when Al Gore had gotten Richard Branson to invest billions into saving the planet? Richard Branson, founder of Virgin Atlantic, powered a Boeing 747 from London to Amsterdam on a coconut oil mixture to highlight the potential of this amazing oil as a clean energy biofuel. Branson had actually invested in biofuels. He was attempting to replace the jet fuel damaging the planet with biofuels that required the consumption of the living planet. It's hard to believe we're seeing this from the left, isn't it? But why haven't you heard much about it? Why isn't the ABC talking about this, showing this film, debating it? They usually love Mike Moore's films. They usually love to promote the political films of the Green left. This one goes too far for them, of course. It attacks renewables and people that most climate alarmists regard as secular saints, like Al Gore. On one side, we have gold bars. Mmm, 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 don't they look good? I'd just like to have some of those gold bars. Uh, on the other side of the scales, um, the entire planet. <laughs> if we do the right thing, then we're going to create a lot of wealth. And when it came time for Al Gore to choose between the entire planet and getting him some of them gold bars, what choice did he make? Here is Al Gore earning his keep by pretending to care about the rainforest while lobbying Congress on behalf of the sugarcane ethanol industry. Any comment on the Brazilian effort here with the issue of the possibility of expanding into that Amazon River Basin with further deforestation to produce more ethanol out of sugarcane is a worry. And I, apparently you're not as concerned about that. Because no, no, I, I am. I simply forgot. Look, to be fair, there are a few things this film forgets too, such as the fact it's a good thing when natural gas-fired electricity replaces coal. This cuts emissions by at least half and allows better integration with renewable energy. The film also conveniently forgets that nuclear energy is the emissions-free silver bullet that could sustain much of the planet with baseload power. The film argues the only solution to all of this is to reduce our population. But it also forgets that as countries become developed, prosperous and educated, thanks in large part to reliable and cheap energy, they tend to slow or stop their population growth. But to bring this back to the domestic media, it seems the ABC has forgotten about Mike Moore and this film. Last I checked, they hadn't reported on it at all. It seems to present too many inconvenient truths.